Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So there's a new report out in the financial press that says Amazon is on track to becoming the first trillion dollar company. Now think about that. I didn't say billion. I certainly didn't say million. I said trillion. Amazon is on track in terms of valuation to become the first or at least one of the first trillion dollar companies in the world. That's according to a Bloomberg report. Now the question becomes, what is Amazon's business model that has allowed it to become a trillion dollar company? And I think that's a really important point because it has public policy implications. Uh, Amazon, as an example of its tax situation, the Institute for Taxation and Economic Policy recently reported that Amazon has built its business model, quote, on tax avoidance. And its latest financial filings makes clear that Amazon continues to be insulated from the nation's entire tax system. Get this. ITEP reports that in 2017, Amazon reported $5.5 billion of U.S. profits and didn't pay a dime of federal taxes on it. The watchdog group goes on to say that the company's financial statement, quote, suggests that various tax credits and tax breaks for executive stock options are responsible for zeroing out the company's tax this year. So again, remember, Amazon, on the verge of becoming uh, the world's first trillion dollar company, didn't pay any federal taxes last year. That's part of its business model. Another part of its business model is to get new tax breaks. ITEP also reports, quote, Amazon's corporate tax rate for 2017 doesn't include the effect of a second big tax dis disclosure. The $789 million one-time tax break that the company projects it will receive due to the new tax law passed by the Republican Congress. So that's another part of its business model. Another part of its business model in moving towards becoming the first trillion dollar company is that Amazon receives huge amounts of subsidies. Uh, Amazon gets all sorts of, uh, is, is trying to get all sorts of subsidies for its second headquarters. Uh, it has been soliciting bids, uh, hundred, multi hundred million dollar, multi billion dollar bids from states and cities to put its second headquarters uh, in their state or city. So Amazon is now also on its way to becoming a trillion dollar company, is also uh, looking for uh, handouts from taxpayers. Now, and the other question is, well, how does Amazon treat its workers? Well, recently Business Insider report, reported that, quote, as Amazon grows, so does its impact on local economies. A new study by Policy Matters Ohio, a nonprofit, found that as of August, more than 700 Amazon employees that live in Ohio also draw benefits from food stamps. And the point being that Amazon is not paying those employees enough for them to be above the, uh, the income level where they're ineligible for food stamps, that Amazon isn't paying its workers enough and that they need food assistance. So the point here is, is that when you read the business press, you'll see the headlines about Amazon becoming a trillion dollar company. But the public policy question is, what are the public policies in place that have continued to enrich Amazon? And are those public policies uh, misplaced? Should Amazon be able to pay no taxes, no federal taxes? Should Amazon get a new $789 million tax cut? Uh, should Amazon be offered uh, billions and billions of dollars of public subsidies while it's paying some of its workers uh, so little that they need food stamps? That's the public policy question here. I mean, there are also public policy questions about Amazon's business model when it comes to uh, its monopoly power and its power to, to crush local businesses, and its power to crush competition, and its power to, to undermine a local brick and mortar stores. Those are also public policy questions. But just when it comes to Amazon's size, its, its valuation, the question really is, should a trillion dollar company, or a company at least on its way to becoming a trillion dollar company, should it be able to pay no federal taxes? And what does that say about our federal tax system? What does it say that, that Amazon pays a lower effective tax rate than most regular workaday Americans? What does it say that Amazon pays a lower effective tax rate than most small businesses that have to pay uh, the regular corporate tax? Is that a worthy bargain? 
Should a company that's, that's on its way to being worth a trillion dollars be able to, to have policies in place that do that? And I should, should mention that all of this has happened at a time when Amazon has increased its lobbying expenditures by about 400% over the last few years. So Amazon clearly is watching these policies, clearly is pushing to influence these policies as it moves to become a trillion dollar company. These are questions that are not often raised in the political arena, but they are certainly political and public policy questions. And when a company is on the verge of becoming the world's first trillion dollar company, these are public policy questions with huge implications for the finances of the United States and the finances of other uh, governments and, and public agencies across the world. Should a company that is worth, is on its way to being worth a trillion dollars, be able to not pay into the tax system that finances infrastructure, that finances all of the things that, that support and sustain businesses across the country and across the globe? That's the big question.